What's up, Breakthrough Success listeners? Mark DeBerti, the podcasting coach here, helping people launch well and monetize their podcasts. And when it comes to just the amount of people, like saturation in business, there's a lot of different people in the same industries. And one of the things you have to do to stand out is to find your natural marketing style, uh, also known as your unique marketing personality. And once you have that, it's easier for people to remember you versus you just being another person within the industry. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in this episode. The guest who joins us today, she's an entrepreneur, business strategist, and a marketing mentor to coaches, authors, and speakers. Our guest is the founder of Simplicity Circle. Uh, the mission for that company is to help entrepreneurs succeed and grow while keeping their business simple. Our guest is also the creator of the Unique Marketing Personality Assessment Tool, inventor of Telesummit, and the author of Simplicity Entrepreneurship, Escape Burnout, Find Flow, and Discover Your Shortest Path to Profit. So our guest who joins us for this episode of Breakthrough Success is none other than Milana Lijinsky. Milana, welcome to the show. Hey, Mark. It's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on Breakthrough Success. And I mean, I feel like there are so many people who they're just looking at other marketers and what they're doing and trying to figure out how to best fit in that mold, while the real answer is to find that unique factor about yourself. So I'm wondering if you could share with us how we can get better at uh, really differentiating ourselves from other marketers with the, our unique style. Yeah, that's a great question. So first of all, it's it's a pleasure to be here and to talk to um, fellow entrepreneurs and side hustlers. As I was telling you, I'm no longer a side hustler. I am a full-time hustler. But one time ago, I was uh, definitely um, you know, juggling a job and a hustle, a side hustle. I uh, started out my business as a web designer and learned to really market myself as a um, online marketing coach slowly kind of transitioned into uh, working with coaches, authors, speakers, experts. And the one thing that I, uh, one thing I definitely see out there is that when um, you try to get yourself out there, you look at other people and you try to emulate other successful people, especially. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, oh, look, this person really succeeded with this uh, method. I'm going to do the same and I'm going to expect to succeed in the same way. And when that doesn't happen, guess what you feel? Um, depending on your personality, you might feel anything from self-doubt, feeling inadequate. You're starting to question if you are even born to be an author. Um, or you start to blame that other person's uh, and their system and their method. Uh, all around, you just confused what happened. Why didn't it work for you? And the reason it didn't work for you is because when somebody sells you a system or a program or a method, and they're saying, this is the fast and easiest and the best way to make money, it means that it's the fastest and best and easiest for them. Mm. Not necessarily for you because you don't know their personal goals, their lifestyle goals. You don't know their journey. You don't know what they've been through, what skills they build up, how their mind thinks, how they see their, their view on business and life. So you can't just copy or, or emulate somebody's method and expect the same results. Now you can absolutely use anybody's approach to business growth and marketing if you understand your own natural marketing style, which is what I call your marketing super skills, like your, your personality as a marketer. Um, and I teach um, four different um, marketing super skill styles, teacher, builder, connector, and champion. Uh, and each one points you in the direction of how you should be marketing yourself. And when you market yourself outside of your natural style, what happens is you don't get results. You work way too hard um, and you're frustrated and you don't know what else to do. And you can spend years like that, right? When you discover what your natural marketing style is, suddenly everything falls in place. You get results. You love it. People love you, clients hire you and buy from you. The, the entire experience is different. 
And it's really insightful to, I mean, when someone says that this thing worked for me really well, that's exactly, it worked them really well, but you have to figure out what works for you. Uh, The thing that works for Milana very well is she is a seven figure coach and she coaches businesses on, you know, how exactly do they grow? How exactly do they find that unique area within themselves? So I'm wondering if you could share with us how you were able to uh, develop the seven figure coaching practice because uh, similar to the idea she said earlier, this may not be the playbook people follow step by step, but it could inspire them to create their own plan that leads them to being a seven figure uh, coaching practice or just like just growing their own business, even if it has nothing to do with coaching. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think the idea of natural marketing style, I was always a, a following mine but I was not aware of it until recently it wasn't available to me just didn't come to my level of my field of awareness that the way that I grow my business is by simply kind of be listening tuning into what works for me Um, I remember actually firing a coach when he told me that I needed to start traveling around the country uh, giving talks about my book uh, which at that time was called um, Coaching Millions. I just, I just published the book and he told me just, you know, go find all the coaching, networking groups, coaching meetups, conferences, go and speak about your book. And I said, I'm sorry, I, you know, it's just not something that I can do. It doesn't fit my lifestyle. I have some, two small children, not going to be able to, uh, to do that. Plus, it didn't feel right to me as a person because I don't necessarily like to go to networking events and conferences. It's not my natural marketing style. Um, but the way that I actually created my coaching business uh, at the very beginning, you know, my background is class from the Soviet Ukraine. Um, I didn't know anything about business until I came to America, became uh, a web developer and then started my business. And the time was so amazing. It was 2001. The internet was just starting to become a tool for business owners. And that's exactly when I started my business. But I started out by creating three eBooks um, and selling resale rights to my eBooks. And suddenly it's like I had a million dollars. Not really, but it felt like at that time, it's like, I write words and people buy words and that's how I eat. I mean, that was a mind boggling (laughs) concept to me. And my husband kept saying at that time, you know, I would say, honey, I wrote another page today. He goes, that's fine. Just show me the money. And then I did. So that that was a lot of fun. Um, But the thing that really propelled me forward and it's actually one of the things I teach today is um, I created the world's very first, Telesummit, which are now called online summits or virtual summits. At that time, the word telesummit didn't even exist. I just pulled it out of thin air and there it was. And then everybody started doing their telesummits, which was really cool. But uh, a virtual summit basically is a, is a virtual event, multiple days, multiple speakers, all, your, all the speakers promote your event. That's how you grow your, your list. And then you start making offers to your list and before you know it, your business takes off. And so that's what happened to me. The year that I hosted my first summit uh, was my very first six figure year. And then it just took off from there. And um, a few years ago, I hit $1.4 million. And that was my kind of my peak (laughs) year. And uh, it was a partnership. The partnership didn't work out. I ended up leaving and now I'm back on my own again. Uh, but that the summit, that virtual event, the concept of a virtual event is really powerful. I think that um, that is what can propel you to the highest level that you want. Because in in a in a summit, you get partners who promote you. You position yourself as an authority, as an influencer. You build a tribe. You kickstart your Facebook group if you're online, if you're on social media. Um, There's just so many amazing things that happen and they happen quickly because the summit happens over the course of one to two weeks and bam, you are an overnight celebrity. And I I love the summit model also. I've done six of them uh, with a a bunch of them being evergreen now. I mean, 
getting people to promote your event, getting money on the all access pass sale, upsells, uh, virtual summits and tele summits, just the idea of online summits in general are very powerful. I wonder if you could share your thoughts on how you promoted that summit and how you got people involved to promote it to make it this big success that it was. Yeah. Well, first of all, when I did my summit, I didn't do a free version. You could not participate in my summit for free. If you wanted to participate in my summit, you had to pay $97 to even get the conference line to dial into. Then if you wanted recordings and if you wanted transcripts, you would pay $197. Then if you wanted all of that plus uh, a post summit, um, a little coaching follow-up program, uh, you would pay $500. And that would include CDs. We we're talking about 2005. You would get CD recordings of, you know, all the summit content. But it's simple to actually sign up and speakers to promote your summit. It's very important to come up with the right theme. What I notice is that a lot of times people right now are creating a summit just like, oh, I'm going to do a summit on business success. Well, that's not going to work anymore. We are in 2019. We're almost hitting 2020. Business success is a non-topic. <laughs> <Right? laughs> so you got to select, you know, you may be a business coach or a business expert, but you have to get very specific. So, um, you know, you might uh, see really cool um, summits on uh, let's see how to grow your business using online challenges. That could be an entire summit of itself, right? Um, you could do a virtual summit on how to, um, on just list building, right? That could be a separate summit area. Um, you could do a summit on uh, migraines, on sleep, on just about any topic that is dear, near and dear to your heart, or a topic that you want to position yourself as an expert on. When I teach virtual summits, what I do is I ask people questions so that we create a content arc because you want to start with the offer. What do you want to offer at the end? Now let's work backwards. Let's reverse engineer to see what the summit needs to be about. And then what session do you teach in your own summit to build up to that offer? So it's like the content seems to be the most overlooked area in putting summits together people focus more on like oh what speakers do i get i'm gonna get all these a-listers okay but um why would people attend it hmm. um what is going to be valuable to them how exciting relevant um long lasting for them is it so choose and you are 50% on the way to success with your summit. Choose the wrong theme. You're not going to be able to get great speakers. You're not going to be able to get signups. You're not going to be able to sell anything. And all of your efforts will be wasted. You don't want that. So choose a hot, sexy, powerful, enticing theme that is super clear and super relevant to people that you're trying to reach. We have a lot more great content coming up in this episode, but first we have a quick message from our sponsor. Do you feel like your well-being is not in sync? That as you are growing your business, you feel all the work is piling up and your health is suffering and you have this scenario where you spend so much time on your business at the expense of your health, at the expense of relationships. If this is you, you may benefit from Reinvent the Wheel. It is a recently released book by Megan McNeely, who was a guest on Breakthrough Success. And in that book, Megan shared with us how we can use well-being to tap into success, not just in the workplace, not just with our businesses, but also with our bodies, our minds, our spirits, our relationships. So if you are someone who wants to tap into success in the workplace with your business and also with well-being so you don't have to sacrifice your health in order to achieve your success or any of life's other essentials, definitely make sure you get a copy of Reinvent the Wheel, which is on Amazon and other places. The link to this book will be in the show notes. But anyways, let's get right back into the episode. And I definitely love that because you got to give people a really good reason to tune in to your summit and a really good reason for speakers to come in and speak as well. If it's a really good topic, they're definitely going to 
show up in force. One of the questions I do have for you though, it's interesting you say that you don't let people in unless they pay. And I'd love to debate this free versus pay because a lot of my summits, especially since I make them evergreen is, um, go in for free. Uh, all the access expires in 48 hours, then you have to pay. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that free model because I see that a lot of places. I'm one of the people who currently uses that model, but uh, yeah. one of my colleagues yeah. told me to do the a other A lot thing. of people, yeah, my very first, so the first three summits I did were paid. Um, and then I taught how to do a summit. And somebody invented this idea of a free summit. That was not me, <laughs> but somebody took it to a... Uh, what they did, whoever came up with the initially free summit, basically they saw it as an opportunity to build a list, which is absolutely true. You will build a list if you are doing your summit for free. However, because it's free, it's seen completely different by your marketplace. Um, it is also, um, it has a very different perceived value, right? Um, there is just, people understand that you're going to get speakers to sh something and then sell and then pitch. So people are now starting to see it as a, as a pitch fest. Now, remember that the first three summits I charged for, um, but the next summits and from what I see right now in the, in our space, they're all free summits and that's totally fine. You just want to make sure that you've, you build in a monetization strategy that works for you. For example, selling recordings is just one stream of revenue for, for your summit. You can also do many other things. You can make an offer um, after the summit. You can become an affiliate of each and every one of your speakers and benefit uh, you know, financially from their recommendations. But whatever you do, whether it's free or paid, Make sure it's high quality and it's, you know, the content is actually, th this is the mistake that people make is they see their summit as a series of interviews. It's actually a training. Nobody wants to listen to just an interview unless you are listening to podcast and you know that a podcast is a, is a inspirational, entertaining interview, right? So that's a very different setup than a summit. So I think that that's where um, that miscommunication happens. A summit is not a podcast. Mm. Podcast has a completely different um, expectation, right? A summit is a training event first and foremost. And if you treat it as a series of interviews, your summit is not going to be as valuable. You want to design it as a training, as a valuable content creation uh, project. And that's how people will say yes, both speakers and attendees. That's a really great point. I mean, summits are definitely training uh, material. And if you view it as such, you structured the ideas a little better. I mean, one of the summits I was on was, uh, we have a few ideas that are still available. Please let us know which one you want to take. So it's like, they already have, a, it's like a training course outline. It's just finding who are going to be the people who fill in those gaps. Yes. So I definitely like the idea yeah, that's, that's of thinking like that. That's a very important point because a lot of times uh, summit uh, leaders will first come up with who they want to interview and then they'll ask their speaker, what do you want to speak about? Like, no, 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 no. That's not how you do it. You first come up with the topics that you want to cover in your summit. It's your summit. Don't ask people what they want to talk about. It's your summit. Come up with the topics, lay out your, um, you know, your curriculum, so to speak and then start inviting people who can cover those topics. That's what I did. And I remember somebody said, Milana, this is the first time I've ever been approached where somebody gives me a topic instead of the other way around asking me what I want to speak on. And he loved it. He was totally on board. And out of all the people that I've ever invited for my summits, I've been doing them since 2005, I only had one no from a speaker. Hmm. And it's from a well-known author I'm not going to name him, but I will say that the reason he said no is because he said, I don't want to be lumped together with other people. I want to be one because I am one. Uh. <laughs> he felt he didn't want to be a part of a collaborative project, which you might run into people like that. The other thing you might run into is experts might ask you to pay them. 
then just move on to the, somebody else. You don't pay anybody to speak in your summit. You're giving them visibility. You are taking care of their expertise. You're positioning them. So you don't need to pay anybody. Yeah, that's a really, really great point because there are people who like, especially some really big tier people who they will want to get paid for that. They'll treat it like a speaking gig, but like, no, it's like, I'm here helping you giving, it's like a podcast interview, but in virtual summit format. So you wouldn't pay someone to be on your podcast. Like for instance, I've done hundreds of interviews. There's more requests than I can get. So then the idea of like coming on my show and me paying you to be on my show, that's not something that feels comfortable to me as a podcast host and not as a virtual summit organizer either. So uh, you pay someone if they make sales through the affiliate links. That's how you pay the people who speak at your summits. Exactly. Yeah. And, and go ahead. Oh, uh, no, I was going to, I was going to transition to the next question, but I want to stay on this thought because uh, I know you've got something really good to say. I was just going to say that if you want uh, more speakers to say yes and more attendees to say yes, just make sure that your summit is truly unique because uh, people are getting tired of summits that are lookalikes. Um, there's a lot of summits out there whose names are similar, whose focus is similar. I can tell you um, one summit from another. They're all kind of like success, happy, conscious, all these words that have already muddled in my mind after I have seen the invitation. So that's what I was going to say. Yeah, that's a really good point. So definitely make your summit different. That's part of that unique marketing personality that we've been talking a little bit about. And uh, just really think about what can make you different from all the other summit organizers, from all the other coaches, from all the other people in your industry, in the area that you're trying to master. That I feel like is something you should think about after you listen to this episode. Another thing you should think about is uh, like, you know, following Milana and keeping uh, on track with her work and uh, keeping tabs with her because I think the work she provides can be really valuable for you. So for everyone wondering where can we keep track with you and where can we follow your work, where are some good places we can go? Yeah, so there are two links that I'm going to give you. One is if you're interested in doing a virtual summit, um, I give uh, a free virtual summit planner that you can just start using, um, just to start kind of planning some of your ideas. Go to summitsmadesimple.com. Summits is plural, simple. Dot com and there's a free planner. There's also five biggest mistakes that the summit leaders make that um, keep their cash and profits um, away from them. Um, so that's the first resources. And then if you'd like to really learn about your natural marketing style, um, take my marketing super skills quiz. It's a really eye-opening quiz to become aware of what your natural abilities are when it comes to marketing. So the link to go to get the free assessment is simplicitycircle.com slash super skills. Simplicitycircle.com slash super skills. Well, we'll definitely include all those links in the show notes. Milana, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. It was a pleasure having you on Breakthrough Success. Thanks for having me, Mark. I hope that your listeners will uh, find this useful. <laughs>